We just learned the song about the poor. Yes. Well, about rich. Sorry. About like rich, rich people. The poor <laughs> is a first stop food for those. <laughs> I learned how to talk in German. Yeah. Sorry? Um, hey, people on the internet, can you hear us and see us? Right in the chat, please. What's your name? Michael. Michael is going to play the violin. Good. Wow. Sorry, we had a lot of trouble with our camera and sound stuff. Tomorrow it'll be better. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, here. Make sure to mute so yourselves. You and right here, if something is wrong. <laughs> I think we're uh, somehow good. We're live. We're, good. we're, we're live, live on YouTube. Live. We just need maybe. Yeah, that's it. Hey, hello, Internet. Everybody say hello, Internet. They were singing our song. Everybody? Hello, Internet. Yeah, that's one bit. Yeah, oh no, it's on. Yes, yes, I keep, I keep talking, I keep talking. Can you hear me? I think it's good. I will, um, yeah, that's, I think that's plenty. Loud and... I'm a little bit strange. Davin in my shoe, but anyways, um, I, um, hello everybody. I had a um, privilege to have the wonderful and amazing Professor Eliyahu Schleifer from Jerusalem as my teacher and mentor uh, as I was studying to be a cantor in Berlin and in Jerusalem. So I'm going to share with you what I learned in his classes about Jewish music in general and about Hasidic music, Hasidic movement in particular. Um, this was a class at uh, HSC, Hebrew Union College in Jerusalem in 2015. And it uh, really helped me to understand what Amiguni what is um, Hasidic philosophy, why Anigunin built or sound in one way or another. Uh, and by then, by 2015, I've already been to Yiddish and Weimar many times and some other festivals as well, as well and was uh, familiar with many Anigunin sound in a group or in concerts. Um, and this class really, really contributed a lot to my understanding and was just very inspiring to hear what Ellie had to tell us. So we are talking about Hasidic music, Hasidic nidun, nidun in Hebrew is the word for a melody. And let's start from, from the root, from the beginning, um, Hasidut as a movement spiritual revival movement, Jewish um, religious movement in Western Ukraine, Podolia and Volhynia in 18th century and spread very rapidly throughout Eastern Europe. And um, it was a um, philosophy religious movement which is based on Kabbalah, the mystic Jewish learning but uh, unlike the Kabbalah, which puts the mystical aspect of the divine in the center, um, Hasidut puts the human being, the mensch, the person in the center and responds with the humanist ideas of its time. And so uh, the founder of Hasidus, Baal Shem Tov, 
Israel Ben Eliezer. There is a story about him uh, having a dream in which he goes to heaven and there he meets the Messiah and asks the Messiah, so when are you finally going to come? And the Messiah answers when there is going to be tikkun olam, when people fix this world, when this world becomes a better place, uh, when people really work on their souls, then I'm going to come. So as opposed to what Hasidic Jewish people believed before that the Messiah is going to come and redeem the world, it's the other way around. The world has to become a better place for Messiah to arrive. And so Baal Shem Tov wakes up from his dream, goes back from, from heaven down to earth and makes it the goal of his life to uh, encourage people to become better human beings, to fulfill the mitzvot, the commandments, to make themselves better people, to make this world a better place. Now, um, you can only work on your soul according to Hasidic philosophy, which is, by the way, is not written in any book. And this is all oral tradition. This is something with which scholars and ethnomusicologists also break their heads and try to understand how it works and why it works this way or another. But there is a philosophy behind all of this. And um, it uh, says that in order to work on your soul, in order to become a better person and make this world a better place, you uh, have to be a person which is happy. Now, um, why is it so important? Because uh, the theory, um, Kabbalistic theory about creation of the world says that when God enters its power, the, un, um, the, the great, the big, un, unlimited power of God enters the sefirot, the 10 sefirot, which represent the Kabbalah. I will not go into this too much for those who know uh, or not. You can look it up, the Kabbalah, the sefirot. In the moment that the divine power enters the sefirot, there is a huge explosion. And this, uh, divine shining, the nitzotzot, the power, uh, is falling into Tehom, the abyss, the darkness, and are caught there by the kipot. Like, it's like little pieces of something which broke. So when a person is melancholic, then his soul is trapped in this kipot he is not or she is not able to function properly in this world. A person is not capable of, of performing the mitzvot in the way it is supposed to be and uh, is not uh, able by performing the mitzvot to release this shine, this mitzvot from the clipboard, from the broken pieces. Because when the shine is released, it kind of goes back enjoins the divine power, so the divinity, the, the divine, the powers of God become very stronger in this world, which all helps to bring the Messiah, right? But when a person is um, melancholic and unhappy, then the, the shines are, are stuck there. They cannot be redeemed. They cannot be released. Now, um, it's a big value for Hasidim to be happy. Rabbi Nachman, his very famous saying, mitzvah uh, besimchat tamit. It's a big mitzvah. It's a big, help um, me with translation. <laughs> it's a big uh, mitzvah. Precept. Hmm? Um, good deed. Good deed or command. Uh, to be always in joy. Now, if you know a little bit about the biography of uh, Nachman, he was a very, very melancholic and depressive person. <laughs> now, it doesn't mean that the person has to be joyful all the time. It doesn't mean that we have to be happy and not allow ourselves to go to a little bit of a darker place. But it means that we have to strive. If we are receiving, we have to strive to be a joyful person. 
Now, it also goes to the theory of four different liquids in our body, which is a medieval theory. It was very, very strong in the medieval times. And it also is based on the Greek theory of Hippocrates. Now, according to this theory, there are four different liquids in our body, uh, four different colors. And according to which liquid dominates in our body, we are one or other type of personality. It can be sanguine, which is red, the blood. It can be phlegmatic, phlegm, yeah. It can be um, choleric, which is uh, the yellow bile. And it can be moira shkoyre, mara shkora, moira shkoyre, that's the black bile. And this is gale, the schwarze gale. And this is what causes a person to be in depression. And as I already mentioned, that's not good. So now, um, there are many tools which you can use to fight the Moira Shkoyva, to help yourself to get out of this very depressive and dark place and um, have good, normal life. First of all, don't stay alone. You have to have a community around you. You have to be a part of a group of people who support you and whom you support. Second, um, storytelling, sharing stories, stories about Hasidim, stories about great rabbis, stories which can be very personal. So in a situation of what is called Hevrusa, when people come together with it, people study together, especially, you share stories, you entertain one another with stories. Uh, consuming alcohol is considered to be a gross and it's very possible. So schnapps is very, very appreciated. Mitzvah, yeah. Uh, you're not supposed to necessarily get drunk, but a little bit, we all know it. I don't have to explain. <laughs> and one of the most important things is dancing and singing together, usually in a circle, corona times, ha ha ha. Um, uh, a circle when people sing and dance in circle represents equality, no hierarchy. This is a very important value of Hasidism as well. Every so singing and dancing helps to cheer your soul. And um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about today is built around the soul of a person and how it helps to worship God and to be a happier person. Now, um, music, according to Hasidic philosophy, is sacred. All music, even though musicologists, have musicologists sometimes break their head and cannot explain why one nigan in is is, um, is absolutely holy. It can be written. It can be created by a rabbi, or it can be something very special, but some nigunium are not, and they're still considered very holy. They, they have a very, very special status in the Hasidic nigunium repertoire. But other nigunium, uh, other melodies is something that Hasidim will never touch, and we don't really understand <laughs> why. But the philosophy is that all music is holy, and all music is coming from God, and the rabbi of um, Message from the beginning of 20th century said that um, the diatonic scale, the seven first notes, uh, represent the seven first sefirot from the Kabbalah. And uh, he also refers to one of the Psalms of King David, which says, Lamanatzeh al Hashminit to the chief singer of the eighth note. And we don't really know what, how exactly to translate this opening phrase of this psalm. Uh, so the rabbi from Medjic, um explains that when the Messiah comes, there will be an eighth note in the diatonic scale. And it's going to be uh, something which we have no idea what it's going to be about. So the music is going to be a part of redemption. The music is going to change. It's going to to turn into something absolutely different from what we know. Now, um, also the melodies 
and the scale, the melodies go up and down and they uh, help the soul also to go up and down. We're getting into it right away. I hope that I didn't, didn't skip something very important. I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to go back for a second to Rabbi Nachman who said, that uh, it's a grace mitzvah to be always in an eternal joy. Now, we know that some of the Guni, they don't necessarily sound very happy. They sound even melancholic. Uh, and that's a big body, a big part of the Guni, which we say. Now, um, not every Nigun has to be joyful. But the Nigunim which are not joyful, they're not depressive, they're not melancholic. They are often called the aguim, longing, or dveikas, the clinging. And it's like a soul which is striving for God, a soul which is, which is wishing to be united with the divine power of the world. It's mm -hmm. like if you compare a lover who is missing his beloved one or her beloved one, this kind of, there is a lot of positivity and hope to reunite with the beloved one. So it's not sad. By the way, you are all in the sun. Are you okay? Do you want to move? Yeah, are you too hot? Okay. Can you sit here really? Yeah. Okay. Um, there are many things which people believe um, are Nigunim one thing or another, and then not necessarily right. So many people think that a Nigun is necessarily a melody without words, and this is not true. There are absolutely many thousands of Nigunim without words, but there are also many Nigunim with words. And there are three different um, stages of sanctity of a Nigun. So the simplest, the simplest nigun is one which is set to a text in either Yiddish or any other vernacular which was spoken in Belarusia, in Ukraine, in Poland, wherever the nigun is coming from. And it's a very common tradition, it was a very common tradition to borrow songs and melodies from the neighbors and make them Hasidic. And this is also part of the same idea of um, taking an evening, taking a song from Ukrainian neighbors, for example, making it Jewish by singing it only. And, um, and uh, it, it helps to release this divine power. It helps the Nitzotzot to come out of the keyboard. And also, um, Craig told us yesterday a wonderful story about uh, the Napoleon army who is, um, you know, um, is in the war with the Russian empire and uh, the Jewish communities hear that uh, the French army is going to liberate them and give them the equal rights. Now, it sounds very nice and wonderful. Finally, good life, finally rights, finally, a possibility to work like a normal human being and not be too poor anymore. But many rabbis realize that it's leading to assimilation. And if it's leading to assimilation, it's not a good thing. So um, they, made, they made sure to learn one of the marches of the Napoleon army and sing it as a meeting. And by this taking away the power from the French army, and turning the needle as a weapon against them so that the Russian Empire can win the war. The Russian Empire wasn't necessarily their friend. Don't get me wrong. Pale of Settlement was a shitty place to live. But, um, <laughs> but this is why Napoleon lost the war. <laughs> okay. Maybe yeah. I just want to jump in and add that, like, also what's special about this story is that, like, well, it was from the Alter Rebbe, I guess, and, like, and it's not just that they heard the song, but he told his advisors to go and like hear this. What's what's their music? Like that's how we'll know them is by their music, you know. So it shows how much music was important for the Chassidim, and that when he heard it, he heard that there was victory in it, and so he knew we have to take this one because the song has the victory. And they sang it even on Yom Kippur, like in like this really special moment, and for somehow like it's become like the symbol of this, you know, 
ability to sort of have victory over over Satan or over whatever over the, the evil and had so forces. And still, he's called the Bull in March. Yeah, he's a nigger, right? Yeah. No, no. Um, you can no hear it. No to hide it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Now this is the first level. I, I went in a little detour and I'm coming back to the three stages of the sanctity of the Navy. So there are different theories, it's just one of them. There's so many, so many things which um, I'm not an expert, I'm just sharing my knowledge so far with you. So the first, the simplest uh, type of uh, meeting is the one which is synced to Yiddish text or any other text of the neighbors. A higher level of sanctity of meeting is when you sing this to a text um, which is in a holy language, meaning either Hebrew or Aramaic, the language of a prayer, not the language you talk every day, the language of a prayer and of books. Now, the holiest of the Nigunim is the one which is sang without words. Which is sang to syllables, yada dai, nanai, or boy, and so on. And in Hasidic um, philosophy, they say that um, a soul is, is, is trapped inside the human body. So a melody which doesn't have any text is like a free soul, it's, it's free to spread the wings and to fly. It's a little bit about Nibunim and um, text. Now um, I'm coming. Uh, to uh, one of the most exciting parts. Oh, by the way, Vegas, do we want to listen to one of those Nigunim which is, yes. which is yeah, yeah, yeah. longing, the longing, the beloved, the beloved one. Okay, let me figure it out. Um, it's a beautiful one. I'm using the recording of, oh, I have to. I'm using the recording of um, the Hasidic Nigun as sung by the Hasidim. Uh, you can look it up, you can find it online very easily. It's an amazing collection. These are two CDs produced by the uh, Hebrew University Research, Research Center for Jewish Music at uh, Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Check their CDs. It's, it's really, really amazing. So here is Nigun for Hitvadut Nikun Dveikas. I said on something? Yeah. It's because I. No, that wasn't. It's this. I sat on. You're playing from the. This is where you're shooting. Oh, it's really hard. It's like. I'm sorry. There's a lot of people. No, come on. That thing was supposed to be like it. Oh, 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 
Okay, so why is it so important to sing Nigunim? Is to to fight the Moirish Hoyre, the holy, and help the soul to elevate itself and to connect to the divine and bring the divine into our everyday life. Now, according to the uh, philosophy, a soul of a human being is not a monolithic being. And a soul has five different layers. Three layers which are in our control and two layers which belong to God. And we have One no second, control Mabel. over that. So the lower, the lower parts, three parts of our soul are Ruach, Nefesh, the Neshama. Ruach is a part of a soul which controls our body. And this is the... Um, the part of the soul which also stays above the grave after a person is buried. Uh, and when you come to the grave and you recite, you recite Tehillim, Psalms, or Kaddish, morn, morning, mourner's prayer, uh, you connect to this part of a uh, soul of a human being which passed away. This is Ruach. Nefesh is a part of our soul which uh, controls our intellect. And um, Neshama is uh, a part of uh, a soul which controls or affects uh, our perception of the divine in this world, our belief in God, our uh, relationship with, with Jewish religion. Now, by singing Nigunim, you shake and you move your soul, you activate it. Um, as I mentioned, music itself, melody goes up and down, it already helps the soul. And also, um, the way Nigunim function, the way they are built very often, and also there is no, no absolute consistency, but many Nigunim are built in the way which helps to activate your soul and to lift it. So very often we would find Nibuni which um, have, for example, three parts. And the way Hasidim sing them would be A, B, C, D, A, B, C, B, A. It goes in circle. It's not, it's not necessarily that we come to the third part and we start from the beginning. We, can, we come back, we go through the middle part in order to start from the beginning. This Nigunim can be sung for hours and hours and hours. Um, Eli, I remember, mentioned that he was witness of Slonim al Hasidi who danced for Hakofes on St. Pastora when you go in circles holding uh, Torah scrolls. And each Hakofe, each circle would take them 45 minutes they would sing one single meeting they bring themselves into a state of ecstasy it's like a meditation it's like really going to this very very spiritually elevated place with a meeting and um so each part of a meeting helps to shake to elevate your soul and to help you to uh get higher, <laughs> literally, get higher and to connect to the divine, reach the neshama, reach the, the third, the higher part of our body, which is still in our control and um, is, um, is connected to the divine. Now, if you reach this very, very high uh, emotional, spiritual place, you cannot go back to a part of an ego. Because you are going to fall from very, very 
high into a very, very, it's like this, the sneak, why does the soul fall from the highest mountain to the lowest peak? We will not get into the sneaking, although it's a very interesting one, but uh, it's, it's hurting. It's hurting to fall from high place into a very deep place. This is why you have to go through this transition and very often the sniguni, which are built in three parts, A, B, C, will after, I don't know, singing them for, for half an hour or an hour, they will end on a big section and not go all the way uh, to the A section. Why? Because when we reach, when Hasidim reach this very spiritual place, they take the divine with them and they go back to their everyday life because they have to function a normal human being. They have families, they have to work, they have to perform their commandments, they have to be a part of this world. So you take the divine with you, but you stand with both feet on, on the ground and you live in this world and you try to make the world uh, a little bit of a better place. Now, um, what is also important is that usually music instruments are not part of singing the Nigurim. Nigurim can be sung and danced at the same time, but there are absolutely no instruments involved. Why? Because uh, the way Hasidim sing their Nigurim is they're constantly raising the intonation. And I'm, I have a very interesting music example here from the same collection from the same CD. Uh, so if you have a music instrument accompanying it, it doesn't let you go up. It doesn't let you rise the intonation. It just traps you. It limits you. Um, and uh, the way, you know, you also help the soul to rise, to go up by raising the intonation. They would go very, 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 very high until they cannot sing there any anymore. And then one will start from the beginning very, very low and it will go again, you know, in circles. So um, uh, the only exception is uh, music instruments are allowed allowed at Simchas, celebrations, for example, a wedding. That's when plasma music in Hasidic um, uh, communities is played. But let's, let's listen to this wonderful example of uh, Boyan Hasidim singing a dance they're doing. And Ellie, I remember him mentioning, him. when they asked my opinion, I told them that they have to make this recording much, much longer. Like really, really let us hear what they're doing there for 10 minutes at least. But for like commercial reasons, it's a CD, you know, which we go have to buy and they try to put um, many other uh, on the CD for commercial reasons, it didn't happen. But I think it's enough to hear what they're doing there. <laughs> I'm 
Sometimes it would enigma would be used uh, a melody of enigma would be used for uh, Kabbalah Shabbat or Lefadudi or for Shabbos morning Eladon. Uh, but usually nigunim are not sung in a the synagogue. They are sung uh, on special occasions uh, in the afternoon of, of Shabbos in Rabbi's home or Sudashlishes or on Purim, on Hanukkah, something which is sung rather at home than in the synagogue. And um, many songs, people think that they are Hasidic or of Hasidic nature, which are not, like the famous Rebbe Elamelech is actually a parody uh, on Hasidim. And other tunes, which we um, would never guess, are Nigunim, uh, traditional old Nigunim, like Havan Nagila, for example, was a Tishnigin, very, very slow Tishnigin. Uh, I think from Romania, but I don't remember from which region. So um, I think that we only have something like 15 minutes left. I will do a quick summary. Um, important thing to be happy to release your soul from melancholy, to fight Moira Shkoyra, the depression, you tell stories, you make sure that you have community around you, you sing, you dance, you drink a little bit of wine and schnapps, um, you activate your soul, you elevate it, you bring the divine into your um, everyday life, um, and you try to be a better human being if you're a Jose. So there are certainly, certainly beautiful, wonderful things about this philosophy which we uh, can borrow for ourselves. Doesn't matter if we believe or not, what we believe um, and how we want to live our lives. I find a lot of beauty in the music, in the philosophy, in their approach to music. And um, I thank my wonderful teacher, Elia Schleifer, for what I got to learn and to hear from him. And I thank you for listening to me today. And in our class, we learned uh, already two Nigunim yesterday and today in the morning. And it would be great if we could um, sing together. Yeah. Yeah? Let's do it. Unless you have questions or you want to add something to what I was talking about. No, I think you did an amazing job. Amazing. Yeah. Sieta Kuzer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Do you, do you want to, should we do this, the Tish one, the slow one Let's first, the and then do the fast one, one to end? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to take it, Craig? Sure. I'll take that over for you. Uh, well, it's okay. I'll keep this here because then yeah. I can. This is a, a brand new to us, Nigan, that we found. We, we learned this amazing one earlier from Pinchas. 
Haas and Moto Schwartz. Are Nguyen heroes this week? Yeah. So both of them are from them. Yeah, both these tunes are from them. And they were Triska Chrysidim followers of the Triska Rebbe. Uh, yeah, so this one is the Tishnigan. If you're keeping track in the KMDMP, it's number 1449-1348. <laughs> if you're not a member of the whole thing, Joy, go on the website and you can look it up and get the music yourself. Correct us as we go. So uh, let's try it. Thank you. 
Are they, are they playing our Nigunim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's lift this up a little bit. Can you go play us? <laughs>
<laughs> Say hi to the internet. <laughs> it's full of vodka, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an amazing scholar. Yeah. All right. I guess. Yeah, I think everything is good here. All the people on the internet say thank you so much. It was wonderful. Uh, yeah, they wonder. Yeah, lots of things. Mostly thank, thank you. Great. And thank you, everybody online, for joining us. This was the first time we tried this hybrid thing. Hey, <laughs> we had some technical challenges, but I think it really worked. It worked. Yeah. Great. We'll see you tomorrow, people from yeah. the online world. That's right. Tomorrow, <laughs> Sasha Luria will be presenting something about Yiddish song. Sasha Luria will be presenting something about Yiddish song. It's the most precise description <laughs> of what Sasha Luria is going to be doing tomorrow. <laughs> Um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. See everybody. See you tomorrow. Later. People online. Bye. 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 We'll miss you. Bye. Bye.